Yo, what's going on? Welcome back for another segment of the FanCast Live podcast. Got some New York Mets baseball to talk about. It's been a long time since I've come on to talk some New York Mets baseball because of the fact that I was just trying to detach myself from the team while they struggled and specifically six games ago when the Mets hit rock bottom losing that game to that first game against the San Francisco Giants uh, where they fell 10 games under 500 for the first time in the season. I think they at that point they were 18 and a half games back of the Atlanta Braves. Uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, they were, I don't know, eight and a half, nine and a half games back in a wild card. So things weren't looking up for the New York Mets. But then somehow, some way, we started to see the Mets win their first game, their second, their third, their fourth, their fifth. And then last night, we're looking for them to win their sixth in a row for the first time this season. They had won five in a row, five in a row earlier in the season. But we were looking for the Mets to finally turn this around because five just wasn't enough. We needed that six. And hopefully they can continue that tonight against the Padres in San Diego and win their seven to get to, what, three games under 500. They're currently sitting four games under. They were 10 games under. Uh, To be quite honest with you, myself and many Mets fans, they they just started to write the team off. I'm, I'm guilty. I just didn't think that the New York Mets had it in them this season to turn the season around. Now, let's pump the brakes. I like what I'm seeing. I like the six-game win streak. We're still four games under 500. i I'm going to start buying in when the Mets finally get to 500. The point here is, is when will they get to 500? Is it going to be sometime in the near future, right after the all-star break, we hope, because after they face off against the Padres here, they're they're gonna be in the the uh there's gonna be a four game break a four day break here for the All Star home run derby and um all star game on Tuesday before the Mets come back Thursday um to play the Dodgers at home. But I'm that's that's I'm gonna buy in when the Mets get to 500, whenever that's going to be. Hopefully it won't take too long for them to do this. Hopefully they'll continue on this win streak here and get to that point sooner rather than later because obviously now every game now becomes more and more and more important as the season progresses into, you know, deeper into July and then into August and then eventually into September when... You know, you start running out of time. Now, the Mets had, what, eight teams, four, six, five, six, seven teams ahead of them in the wild card race. They just jumped over two, the Padres being one of them, because going into last night's game, both teams were sitting at 41 and 46. Now the Mets sitting at 42 and 46. The Padres losing last night, obviously, fall to 41 and 47, so they move ahead a game over the Padres. The Cubs won last night against the Yankees. They lose today against the Yankees. Uh, So the Mets pick up a half a game on the Cubs. So things are starting to shape up now. But again, at what point do I start buying in? I'll start buying in when the Mets eventually get to 500, if they ever get there. Because... I, I, I just don't see a team under 500 making the postseason this year. I just don't. I just, the, the, the wild card teams are all going to be over 500. So if the Mets don't get over 500, I, I don't think they have a chance of making the wild card as an under 500 team. Uh, specifically, when you look at the competition ahead of them, the Phillies, the Marlins, uh, the Cubs, the Brewers, uh, you name it. Um, these These teams have been inconsistent, someone like the Mets have, but they've been able to maintain an over 500 record. So, you know, again, the Mets need to get to 500 before we can start talking about 
a playoff push, a wild card push, or whatever the case is. Um, you know, I'm I'm enjoying the ride right now, and I'm sure a lot of Mets fans are enjoying it right now because this is something we had envisioned was going to happen uh, a lot sooner in the season. I know we got off to a slow start, and I know the month of June was just an absolute disaster as far as Mets were concerned. They lost every single series in the month of June, with the exception of the one series, a two-game set against the Yankees, which they split. But otherwise, they had lost every single series in the month of June. Um, you know, there's been a lot of inconsistencies with this team. Uh, offense has been inconsistent. Pitching has been inconsistent. The bullpen has been inconsistent. When they're hitting, they can't pitch. When they pitch, they can't hit. When they have the lead, they can't hold on to leads. When they, you know, when they're trailing, they find it hard to, you know, uh, chip away at the leads that opposing teams take on them. So it, it's just been a total, total disaster as far as the New York Mets are concerned this year. And um, we are starting to finally see this team click on all cylinders. You got Francisco Lindor, who is just on fire. You got Vogelback, who took a mental break, comes in, starts getting hits, and then, you know, he disappears for a bit, and now he's got, what, five hits in his last two games. So he's off to a good start again, uh, specifically in the series against the, the Diamondbacks and, and, and now the Padres. So hopefully we'll continue to see that. Um we we've seen Nimmo go on you know a, a home run streak and now he's he's cooled off a bit. He had that one home run in the Arizona series. He hasn't done really much uh, thus far against the Padres. Uh, Marte, you know he'll Marte. The problem with Marte is is that he is a phenomenal hitter. He's a great defender, but he is finding himself in situations where he's got uh, runners on base and one out, and he's consistently. Doing it, doing it consistently by grounding into double plays uh, in situations when the Mets really need him to get a hit. And um, it's unfortunate, but every player is going to go through that. Um, but I tell you, uh, the starting pitching right now, um, there's a stat that I wrote down earlier today uh, that I saw in last night's game against the Padres. The Mets are 27-4. and four in games when their starters go six innings plus and they're 11 and one in games when their starters go seven or more that's an incredible stat because when you really think about it the Mets have lost so many games because their starters have consistently not gone beyond five innings plus and that's been a problem because then show Walter has been has been having to go to his bullpen early and, of course, you've had your issues with the bullpen. You've got a bunch of guys that really don't belong on this major league roster right now that are going out there pitching and eating up innings for the New York Mets. They haven't done a good job for the most part. And, you know, it, it's cost the Mets a lot of games. And it's the reason why the Mets are where they are right now. Because had their bullpen been a lot better, had their starters been a lot better, Maybe this would not be a situation the New York Mets would uh, are in right now, but it is what it is. Um, the The series against the Giants, um, it got off to a bad start with that loss on that Friday night. That put them ten games under five hundred. That was just like the bottom of the bottom for the season for the New York Mets. But then they go and win the next two games to win the series. But that you know, was not July. Um, the first game, the first loss, obviously, of the series was the end of June. And then the, the two wins, uh, Saturday and Sunday, were obviously July 1st and 2nd. So the Mets get off to a good start for the month of July. They've not lost in, in the month of July yet, and hopefully they can continue that uh, through the course of the month. Um, but, yeah, I mean... That, that was rock bottom. Um, unfortunately for me, and I'm sure for a lot of you Mets fans who just can't tune the team out, even during times when they're struggling, you know, I just find it 
I, I just have to struggle with the team, and it, and it sucks. It's such a worst feeling. I mean, being a Mets fan is is not easy. It really is not easy to be a New York Mets fan. Uh, after winning 101 games last year, you thought that this was going to be a revenge season, and we've we've heard that term so many times. Heading into the season, during the offseason, we've heard that term so many times. Oh, the, the Mets are going to come back and have a revenge, revenge season. They're going to go and win the World Series. That quite hasn't been the case. Um, unless the Mets can sustain this winning streak that they're in right now and continue to win and win series after series after series like they were doing back in 2022, I just can't see how the New York Mets can get back into this wild card race being now that they're six and a half games back, um, unless, you know, the teams in front of them, you know, start to struggle and the Mets continue to win and take advantage of, you know, the teams ahead of them that are struggling. The Dodgers are struggling. You know, the, the, the Brewers are struggling. The Cincinnati Reds, I mean, who saw that one coming? I mean, who saw the Cincinnati Reds taking over first place in the NL Central? Who saw the New York Mets being 10 games under 500? Who saw the San Diego Padres being, you know, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 games under 500? And the Mets and Padres are two of the top teams as far as team salaries are concerned. And for them to be where they are right now is inexcusable. I mean, fans in, in San Diego don't boo a whole lot, but they've been booing this year. And you know Mets fans have been booing at City Field this year because of the, the, the recent Mets struggles. And rightfully so. I mean, you, you, can't, you can't, as a team, spend $300-plus million on players um, and get, you know, average to below average results. You just can't do it. Verlander came in here at $43.3 million, and he's just not been Justin Verlander. This is, is this the same guy that won the, Cy, the AL Cy Young Award in 2022? Because he's not the same pitcher. Did you guys watch last night? I mean, he struggled through six innings last night. And when you look to his final stats, he struck out two and walked three. I mean, when do you see... An elite pitcher like Justin Verlander, you know, strike out only two batters and walk three. It's so frustrating to see that because when when the when the Mets saw Jacob Degrom go to Texas and sign with the Texas Rangers for that big contract, and they brought in Justin Verlander, Mets fans were like, "All right, we just we just replaced Jacob Degrom with a." AL Cy Young Award winner and Justin Verlander. That's pretty cool. But he has not been um, anything close to the pitcher he was in 2022. Now, say what you want about Justin Verlander. You think he's done? I don't think he's done. I, I just think he's he's either playing hurt or he just has not adjusted to the new pitching clock. And I, maybe nobody's talking about this. I think I brought it up on a few occasions on Twitter. I really think that the pitch clock is having some kind of effect on some pitchers. I'm not going to say every single one of them, but some pitchers are being affected by this. Guys like Justin Verland and Max Scherzer, who, who probably are the type of pitchers who like to think things through before they get on that rubber and throw their next pitch. You know, they're being forced to throw pitches within 20 seconds. And that might have some kind of effect on their performance. Maybe if it's not, you know, a mental thing, maybe it's a physical thing. Maybe they just aren't, you know, maybe that core needs to be worked on. I don't know. Something has got to give. I mean, obviously, there are some pitchers in this league. And again, I'm not going to say every single pitcher is being affected by this, but I'm, but I'm sure there are pitchers in this league, not just New York Mets pitchers, but pitchers across Major League Baseball that are being affected by the pitch clock to the point where it's just rushing their routine and they're still trying to adjust to it. I could be wrong. Um, certainly could be wrong. 
Um, Max Scherzer, I mean, uh, again, forty another $43 million pitcher that the Mets signed um, a, se- a season, uh, more than a season ago. Um, he's been the guy, I mean, last year he was lights out. I mean, he was, I mean, how many, how many strikeouts was he getting per nine innings? Uh, 10, 11, nine, 10, 11, something like that. He's nowhere close to that to this year either. Um, he's been the type of pitcher who's been handed a lead only to watch that lead just get blown away. Um, he's given up a lot of home runs this year. Justin Verlander's, I, I mean, He's given up home runs this year, too. I mean, last night, for instance, the Mets give him a one nothing lead, and in the bottom of the first inning, he's given that lead right back. He's given the, he gave up the lead. He gets out of the first inning down 2-1. to one. But, um, you know, San Diego is one of those teams who doesn't fare well when their opposing team strikes first. Uh, I think their record was something ridiculous. Uh, I mean, very, very bad. I can't remember the exact number, but San Diego's not a very good team when their opponents score first. Not a very good record. I can't I can't remember for the life of me what that record was, but it wasn't very good. Um so, yeah, I, things are starting to look up for the New York Mets. Am I buying in? Uh, of, of course I'm going to buy in. But am I buying the fact that they're turning their season around? I need to see more. I need to see that they're going to, you know, sustain some kind of win streak. Uh, if not, you know, consecutive games. I like to see them win series after series after series from this point on. Because last year, that's what they relied heavily on. I mean, when, how many times did, did the Mets lose a series last year? Let's not talk about the Atlanta Braves. I mean, besides the Braves, how many other series did the Mets lose last year? I think they lost a series to the Chicago Cubs. They lost a, a couple of series to the Atlanta Braves. Uh, I mean, I don't know how many other series the Mets lost last year. I think they might have lost maybe four or five series in the entire season of 2022. Uh, I, I, I could be off by a series or two, but the Mets were very good last year. That's why they went on to win 101 games. I mean, they ran out of gas at the end of the season, um, unfortunately. But I'm, I, I mean, I like what I'm seeing right now. Definitely like what I'm seeing right now. There's there's a positive feeling now when you are watching a Mets game. Uh, there's a lot of, a lot more positivity, specifically on Twitter, as far as Mets fans are concerned. But then there are those who are waiting for, you know, utter failure. Um, and I know the first couple of games of this winning streak, I'm sure everybody was, you know, thinking. Okay, here we go. There's another blown lead. But I tell you, the game that the Mets won, the final the 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 last game of the series against Arizona where they won what was it nine nothing? I mean, that was a complete ass whooping by the New York Mets. That was the New York Mets team I remember for tw- from twenty twenty two. And we need to see a lot more of that. And the Arizona Diamondbacks hadn't been shut out at all this season. The Mets were the first team to do so. So that's great. That's a good feeling. But again, there are still a lot of inconsistencies as far as pitching is concerned. But if you noticed, if you haven't noticed, Buck Showalter is pushing his starters, even on nights when they're struggling, to go beyond five innings. Verlander last night went six. Buckshaw Walter could have easily decided to take him out after five. You know? Scherzer was another one. I mean, he could have easily taken him out at five, even four. I mean, he's pushing his starters because he knows that the results and the odds of the Mets winning a game if he pushes his starters to go beyond five are very good, and it's paid off for Buck Showalter. 
So finally, we're starting to see him make the right decisions instead of, you know, quickly going to his bullpen on nights when his starters are struggling. So kudos to Buck Walter. He's finally, I think, figured this out. I think the team has finally figured this out. But I still think the Mets need some help in the bullpen. Quintana is due back after the All-Star break, though he struggled in his last, his fifth and final start in uh, in his rehab assignment at AAA um, last night. I believe it was last night. Yep. Friday night was his last start. He's going to be rejoining the team for the start of the second half of the season after the All-Star break. Maybe that's, you know, something the Mets really need. How the Mets are going to shape up their bull, uh, their uh, their rotation with Quintana back, I have no idea yet. I haven't read anything up on it yet, and but I'm sure that he's probably going to end up taking Dave Peterson's spot in rotation. What will happen to Dave Peterson, I have no idea because he's pitched fairly well since coming up from AAA. He had struggled at, this, at the beginning of the season. He was sent down to AAA. He was struggling at AAA. And then they call him up for a start, and he just dominates. I, I mean, maybe the guy is happy to be back in, in the majors. Who, who knows? And maybe he just doesn't want to go back, and he knows that he's got to go out there and perform and make the best of his, of his opportunity to make sure that he stays at the major league level. But now with Quintana coming back, who knows what's going to happen? Is he going to go to the bullpen? Are the Mets going to go out to a six-man rotation, which I highly doubt that they do that. I don't think it's a good idea. I think Kodai Senga has really responded well to pitching every five days. Um, and Speaking of Senga, he just got named to the All-Star game. He's going to be a replacement to, I don't know who it was that, it was, that was injured. So this is gonna, in his first season in Major League Baseball, he's going to be an All-Star. I don't know if he's going to end up going. Maybe it's a good idea he stays home and rests, but I don't know. That's up to him. Uh, it's a great honor for him. It's a, you know, it's, he's had a good season. You know, I, I think Senga has had the most consistent season out of all the starters for the New York Mets. And hopefully, w- with this, hopefully this win streak continues through Sunday and the Mets go into this break with a, you know, a game win streak, hopefully. And then get off to a good start against the Dodgers at home after the break because the Dodgers are struggling. Um, Dodgers, another team with a high payroll, and they're not in first place. So hopefully the Mets will take advantage of the Dodgers. Two of three would be fine by me. They have to win the series. They have to win most of their series, if not all of them, from this point on. Otherwise... It's going to be hard. It's going to become harder and harder for the New York Mets to try to make a push for a wild card spot because there's no way they're catching the Braves, unless the Braves just get demolished um, with with injuries to the point where they just can't sustain um, their first place standing in in the NL East. But um, I, I just I just can't see how the Braves can cough up. A, uh, a big lead in the NL East. They're so loaded in their farm system. Somebody gets hurt, they bring somebody up. Uh, it's just amazing. It, I just love the way the Atlanta Braves organization is run. I've been saying it for years that I think the Mets should take a page out of their book and run the organization like the Braves do. Obviously, Cohen wants to take a page out of the L.A. Dodgers book because he sees the um the Dodgers is a team that built their their um their farm system and then once their farm system was developed they started to bring those players up and then they started adding you know big money players to that roster and that's when they started to really win at you know at this level and they've been consistently winning with the exception of this year obviously because they've been struggling obviously injuries as it has been a big part of that but, you know, everybody, every team in Major League Baseball goes through that every season. Everybody faces adversity. The New York Mets are no strangers to, to um, adversity. And they've had to deal with it, too. And it's just how you handle it um, that 
that helps you get through it or not. Um, the Dodgers obviously have a good farm system as well. You know, when they're, they've got injuries, they bring up players from their farm system. Otherwise, they go out and they spend money and they get somebody that they want. But with the All-Star break coming up and then the trade deadline soon after that, obviously if the Mets sustain this win streak and continue the winning, the Mets obviously are going to have to go and make a couple of deals um, to try to improve this bullpen, maybe improve the rotation if they have to. Um, maybe not somebody that they can add to the rotation now, but obviously they, they could use some depth in the rotation because Tyler McGill has struggled. He's been sent down to AAA. David Peterson, who knows? Is he going to stay? Is he going to go back down? You know, there's a lot of things the Mets are going to have to consider. Um, you know, we talk about Danny Vogelback um, a lot. And, um, you know, just when we, you know, tear him a new asshole, the guy starts to hit again and, you know, we get off his back. And then once we get off his back, he starts to struggle again. But Vogelback to me is a type of player that just he adds no value to the New York Mets because of the fact that he can't play a position on the field. Tommy Pham was another guy that at the beginning of the season we wanted off this team. We want him DFA'd, he can't hit, he can't field, he can't do this, he can't do that. And he's proven us all so wrong. He has taken over the job in left field from, you know, Mark Hanna. Um, listen, he's, he's hitting. You know, he's stealing bases. He's playing some good, solid defense. I mean, his assist in that game last night against the Padres where Kim tried to extend a double into a triple. He threw him out at third base. That was a nice play. So, you know, not for nothing, Tommy Pham is having himself a pretty nice season. Um, even after all the um, the crap that he had to take at the beginning of the season, specifically from Mets fans who were just wanted him out of town. And now Mets fans love him. I love him. I want to see him out there every day. Um, but again, Vogelback just, you know, he had his, uh, three, three hit game last night. I mean, he had singles. I mean, he's not driving a ball out of the stadium. He's, he's a DH. He's supposed to be hitting home runs. He's got five on the season. So, um, I'm sure the Mets are going to have to make some decisions, obviously. Because if they can sustain this win streak and they can continue winning from this point on, the Mets are obviously going to have to do something at the trade deadline to try to improve this this lineup, uh, make it deeper, make it you know m more efficient on power. Um, something, something's got you know something's got to be done. Francisco Alvarez, oh my God, he is the player we've been talking about for I don't know how long now. Um, he's been coming through the system for so many years. Everybody's been talking about him. He's the number one prospect in baseball, this and that. And, you know, he got called up last year. He struggled. He looked like he didn't belong in Major League Baseball. He was just overmatched at the plate. He had he looked like he had no freaking idea what he was doing. Same thing with, when, with his call up this year. Uh, specifically when Narvaez went down with his injury, he just looked lost at the plate. He didn't know what he was doing. Uh, the Mets weren't really sure whether he was going to stick around or not. Uh, they were thinking about maybe going with Nito every day, but then he started to figure this out. And he's got 16 home runs on the season. He's got, I think, 31, 32 RBIs. He's got his average back up to like 245. He had his first four-hit game last night against the Padres. I mean, he hit. I think he hit a home run in each game against Arizona in a series in Arizona. He is the superstar in the making that we had all envisioned for the last couple of years. He has been phenomenal for the New York Mets. Defensively, offensively, you name it, he's done it all. He's done everything the Mets have asked him to do. And the the I mean he the confidence that that he has right now going to the plate and swinging the bat, uh, it's just it's just great to see that the Mets 
developed a player from scratch from the point of signing until now. The Mets actually developed Francisco Alvarez into the player that he is right now. And it's just so nice to see. Um, you know, Brett Beatty obviously has been sitting out the last couple of days because he's been um, nursing uh, a minor groin injury. Um, hopefully he'll be back. They're probably going to keep him out until after the All-Star break, let him rest it up. That's fine. Guillaume has been playing third base. Uh, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. The Mets just want to make sure that he's rested up and ready to go for the second half of the season. He's 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 having a pretty good rookie year himself. Um, and I think, and I really, truly, strongly believe that he's just going to get better. Um, Francisco Alvarez has gotten better and better, which he, each day that he plays, I think Brett Beatty is going to do the same thing. Now, I wish that Mark Vientos would get the same opportunity here at the Major League level, but unfortunately, he's not going to get that opportunity right now because there is someone in this organization. I don't know if it's Buck. I don't know if it's Billy. I don't know if it's Steve Cohen. I don't know who the hell it is that does not want Mark Vientos up here unless he's going to play every day. Well, with Vogelback, who continues to find ways to, you know, quiet the critics is a big reason why Vientos is not up at the major league level right now. Because when Vogelback had that mental break, Vientos was playing somewhat. And then once he came back and he started to hit, Vientos no longer was playing. And it's unfortunate because Vientos right now is just ripping the ball off, ripping the cover off the ball at AAA Syracuse. Speaking of Vientos, what about Ronnie Mauricio? I mean, the kid just continues to hit at the AAA level, continues to hit home runs. He hit a snag for, for a few days where he, he wasn't hitting, but he's back to hitting, and he's back to hitting home runs. He's another guy that you probably won't see in 2023. If you do see him, it's probably going to be late in the season with the with the call-ups. I don't know how many call-ups the Mets get, the major league teams get this, uh, uh, now. I don't know what the new rule is. I forget. Maybe it's five or six. Either which way, you probably won't see him till then if that's even the case. So Vientos, Mauricio... Don't be surprised if these these kids are part of some kind of trade package to either add some bullpen help to this to this Mets roster or you know a big bat in the, on a, in this Mets lineup. We don't know because quite honestly the Mets are pretty loaded as far as position players are concerned at the minor league level. They need to replenish their pitching. So don't be surprised if the Mets continue to keep guys like Vientos and Ronnie Mauricio at the AAA level and continue to let them hit down there, 300, you know, hit home runs left and right, you know, stolen bases, whatever. I think the Mets are setting themselves up for some big trades that are going to probably involve the likes of Ronnie Mauricio and Mark Vientos at the trade deadline. I don't want to see that because I would love to see Ronnie Mauricio at second base next year with McNeil uh, moving over to left field on a permanent basis. Um, I would like to see uh, Vientos be the everyday DH. You know, there's a lot of things we like to see, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we're ever going to see it because the Mets have a plan. Um, you know, Stevie Cohen has a plan. Billy Epler has a plan. You know, Buckshaw Walters doing whatever he needs to do or whatever he's been told to do in order to get the Mets to where they need to be for the remainder of the season. So the win streak is up to six. The Mets are playing some really good baseball. Are we buying into it? Are we not buying into it? Are we, you know, waiting to see more? I'm going to say I'm going to wait and see. 
I like to see this win streak continue. I like to see the Mets continue to win series in the month of July, something they didn't do in the month of June. And let's see what happens uh, specifically after the Dodger series. Because if the Mets can sweep, the, somehow, some way sweep the Padres this weekend, that would be tremendous because that would put them two games under 500 heading into the All-Star game. And then they come out of the All-Star break to face off against the Dodgers. Um, if they can win two out of three against the Dodgers, that would put them, what, a game under 500. You know, so things could start looking up for the New York Mets if they, again, continue to win. Um, very important. Um, I know there's, uh, you know, a little, a little less than 80 games to go, I think, now at this point. Uh, I think we're a little over half a season, but there's still a lot of games to to be played. But there's a lot of teams in front of the New York Mets that the Mets have to overtake. And, um, you know, those teams aren't going to go away. They're not going to go away easily. Philadelphia is winning. You know, Miami is winning. Who And who saw that coming? We all said that Miami was going to be a competitive team. I, I, I think I said that that Miami was going to be competitive. They were going to be about a 500 team. They were going to be a thorn in a lot of team sides, specifically in the NL East. And they're beating expectations. They're over 500. They're in second place, I think. Are they in second place? I think they're in second place right now. And Philadelphia, they're looking over their shoulders to Philadelphia, who's on a win streak right now. Miami's on a losing streak. So... It's just a matter of time before, you know, somebody jumps over the Marlins. It's probably going to be the Phillies, obviously, first before anybody else. Um, but we'll see. Um, that's all I got. Why don't you guys comment on this video and let me know if you're buying in or if you're just going to wait it out and see before... Um, you start believing whether or not the Mets are going to make a push for the playoffs, uh, specifically the wild card in 2023. Till the next time, peace. Let's go Mets.